Hi, my name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, November the 26th. We'll sing several songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a short uh, message for you that I hope will be of benefit. We sing here at Northfield from Songs of Faith and Praise. With that, I don't know if you have that book. I will give you the number from this book <clears throat> and the name of the song so that you could perhaps use your own book or Google the song so that you can sing along with us. The first song that we will sing is number 303, O Worship the King. We'll sing it through two times. O Worship the the king. <clears throat> oh, worship the king, all glorious above, and gratefully sing his wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. O oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Number 148, Lively Song. I keep falling in love with him. 148. I keep falling in love with him. <clears throat> I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over, and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over, and over again. And before the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 334. Tis midnight and on Olive's brow. 334. Tis midnight and on Olive's brow. <coughs> we'll sing the first three verses. The first three verses. <clears throat> Tis midnight and on all his brow. The star is dim that lately shone. Tis midnight in the garden. Now the suffering Savior prays alone. Tis midnight. 
Hide them from all removed. The Savior wrestles long with fears. He that disciple whom he loved. He not his master's grief and tears. Tis midnight and for others guilt. The man of sorrows weeps in blood. Yet he that hath in anguish knelt is not forsaken by his God. It's this part of the service that uh, we observe <coughs> what is instructed to us in the Lord's Word, the Lord's Supper, on the first day of the week. We don't observe it on Monday or Wednesday or Thursday. We observe it on the first day of the week because the scriptures <coughs> are very plain in that. So on the first day of the week, we are to break bread. We are to uh, eat of the bread and drink of the cup. It is uh, in symbol of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's body that was given up for us. It is a symbol of his blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. So as we gather about the table, we do so in solemnity, knowing what an important part of our Christian life this is, that Jesus sacrificed himself one time for all, that we might live eternally with him, he shed his blood, that his grace may be poured upon us, and that we might have forgiveness of our sins. With that, let's pray for the bread, the body of our Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that in your divine wisdom, you devised this wondrous plan in which Jesus left your right hand and came down to earth to live as a man. And in that he taught and he performed miracles uh, and he did that through your power and through his power as uh, one who was at the creation. And as we think of his body hanging on the cross, we know the anguish that he must have felt physically as a man. And he did that for each one of us. Bless us as we partake Help us to understand the magnitude of the sacrifice that was made for each one of us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. As we uh, take this uh, fruit of the vine to our lips, help us that it is the blood of our salvation. Help us to understand that through the shedding of blood, through that life-giving liquid that courses through each of our bodies, that Jesus's blood was so special, that his blood was indeed the blood of our salvation. It was the blood that does indeed wash away our sins. So as we partake, let us bring our sins to our God and know that through Jesus they can be forgiven. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen.
having concluded the Lord's Supper, for a matter of convenience at this time, we take up an offering. Uh, this is also commanded that on the first day of the week, we are to lay by and store that which we have prospered. I hope that all of us have prospered. I hope that all of us are able to give according to our means, according to that which uh, we are called to give. Help us to remember indeed how prosperous we are. And as we give, help us to do so uh, with an open mind and open heart and cheerfully knowing how important giving back to you is. Let's pray for the offering. We just thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. We pray that this church uh, will be just in their stewardship of this money. Help, uh, help the church to use it so that your word can go forth. Help this money to be utilized so that people who are in need can be aided. Bless us in our giving. Help us to be cheerful. Help us to be mindful that uh, your kingdom here on earth is a physical kingdom along with a spiritual kingdom. And the physical part of the kingdom demands that we are able to uh, keep our doors open and, and keep our goals in mind with what we're going to do with these monies. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we will sing is number 461. 461. You may remember me referencing this song in my lesson this morning. The title of this song is Be Not Dismayed What Air Be Tied. You will understand why I picked this song as you uh, uh, hear the title of my lesson this evening. Be not dismayed what air be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you through days of toil when heart doth fail. God will take care of you when dangers fierce your path assail. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way he will take care of you god will take care of you all you may need he will provide God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, 
God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. I hope you enjoyed singing praises to the Lord as much as I did. And I just pray that as we uh, uh, go into the lesson phase of our evening worship, uh, that you will uh, just remember uh, that God will take care of us. Hence the title of my uh, lesson this evening, and the title is God's Care. God's Care. You know, when, when we look around us, there are some things that you know, are, are somewhat hard for us to explain uh, in the physical realm. Let me give you a few of these just to uh, put us in a, a, a better mood here. Beans will grow up a pole and they will grow from left to right. Whereas morning glories will grow up a pole and will grow from right to left. We can drop seeds into the ground. We can drop them sideways, upside down. And they always come up out of the ground. One grain of corn can produce a stalk that may have one ear or two ears of uh, corn. And uh, it may perhaps produce up to 742 grains on each ear. A light crop of wheat will produce approximately 30 grains on each stalk. A good crop of wheat will produce approximately 60 grains on each stalk. And there will always be an even number of grains. How about the gestation period of certain organisms. A potato bug will lay an egg and it will be fertilized and hatch in seven days. The sparrow hatches in 14 days. <coughs> A hen will lay an egg and it will hatch in 21 days. The duck, 28 days. The eagle egg takes 35 days. The parrot egg takes 42 days and the snake egg up to 49 days. And notice that each one hatches in a multiple of seven days. Now, why am I bringing all of this up? Why is this kind of unique to our physical world? Well, it's because every form of life in the vegetable kingdom and in the animal kingdom has a predetermined set of characteristics, a master plan of detail. And please understand that it is God's plan. And God has a perfect plan for all of these organisms. And with that in mind, we circle in to my lesson this evening. God has a perfect plan for your life and for my life and supplies our needs through his word. And by his grace, we receive the strength to rise above our circumstances. And so with this, with the reminder, and it wasn't subtle, they were 
uh, pointed reminders of God's power and of his design, we may be reminded that God cares for each one of us. Because nowhere in the Lord's word does it say the potato bug was created in his image or the bean plant or the morning glory or the eagle or the duck. We as human beings are created in the image of God. And so with that, we look at God's plan. If we turn to the book of Hebrews, here's what the Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 to 6. He himself has said, I will never desert you. I will never forsake you. So that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? You know, sometimes our life is a whirlwind, isn't it? We move from one thing to another thing, especially in our younger years and our formative years. It seems like everything is swirling about us. And with that come troubles. With that come the hardships of life. And we are supposed to face them, as James says in the first chapter, we, we should face them with perseverance. It says, blessed are we when they persecute us, because when we are persecuted through God's care, we are able to overcome that. Let's keep in mind that no matter how people react, to things that happen to us, and they will react. And by the way, we may have some good brothers and sisters that care so much for us. But here's one thing that we can always remember. God is always there. The poet Eva Brazel expressed it well when she wrote this poem. The poem is entitled, Silent Moments. There is a silent moment between the darkness and the day when all our cares and trials of life seem so far away. God holds the heavens in his hands and parts the eve of night. With reverent gentleness, he pushes forth the dawn. I feel his presence everywhere as sunlight fills the land. It is as if my Lord above is holding to my hand. Lovely words. Lovely words to help us understand that God is willing to go hand in hand with us through this life. And in those moments when the whirlwind of life seem to pull us down. Let's remember what God's special Holy Spirit inspired words say. In Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10, the psalmist says these famous words, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. Whatever happens to us, whether good or bad, let's not get so busy, but that we can just pause and remember who we are and who God is. God is our creator, and we are created in his image. And there comes a time 
that we need to meditate on the power of God as seen just in our body. It ought to be great comfort to us. And so through our problems, uh, we have solutions. And though our problems seem too big for us, God is bigger than us. There are no problems that God cannot take care of. Therefore, with that in mind, let's heed the words of the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, where Peter says, casting all your anxiety on him. You ready for this? Because he cares for you. We can cast our anxiety on our God because he cares for you. Now, this has been replete through Old Testament times and New Testament times. Let's remember the words of the prophet Isaiah when he speaks of God's power. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens by the span and calculated the dust of the earth by the measure and weighed the mountains in a balance and the hills in a pair of scales? If God can do that, surely he can handle my problems. Surely he can handle your problems. Why? Because through the inspired pen of Peter, we just found because he cares for you. Now, Isaiah says even more. He doesn't end it there. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31, he says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles, they will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Look at those words. Look at how powerful those words are. Why will we mount up with wings like eagles, run and not get tired, and walk and not be weary? Because God cares. We always have God's care. I know that uh, in the New Testament, we know that uh, Jesus said that uh, God's eye is on the sparrow. And as that famous song, uh, his eye is on the sparrow says, his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. And so as I began this lesson and I talked about some of the physical aspects of life regarding plants, regarding animals, and understanding all of this, we understand that God has set the world, his creation, in motion. But for you and I, the most important aspect of that life is that he cares for each one of us. And ultimately, how much does God care? 
He cares so much that at just the right time, he sent his son, Jesus, to us. He sent him in the form of a man, a man who had godly powers, who was able to teach as no man has ever teached, who was able to perform miracles, uh, who had power over nature, who had power over illnesses. And this man, this son of God and son of man, Jesus, ultimately paid the price. He paid his life that we might live eternally with our God. How much does God care for us? God's care extends to the point where he wants us to live eternally with him. It's amazing to me to think when this life is over, when this kingdom here on earth is over for each of us, we can look forward to that wonderful kingdom of living with our Lord forever. Children of God are able to do that. Those who have obeyed God into salvation. And so the invitation for each of you this evening is to understand that in order for God to truly care for us, we must be his children. The Bible is clear. We have to take a look at the word of God and believe it. And then we must respond to it. Respond in such a way that we said, I know that Jesus Christ is indeed the son of the living God. We need to say, I don't want to do the things that I used to do. I want to repent of those. And I want to be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you are uh, subject to that invitation, uh, we pray that you will uh, respond. If it is right now, be in touch with one of, uh, one of us. We will help in that avenue. We hope that this message was one in which each of us will draw closer to God, understanding that he cares for us. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your loving care. We're grateful for the comfort that we find in you. And as we look about your great creation and see all of the unique aspects of, of that creation, help us to understand how much you indeed care for us, those that are created in your image. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to comfort us. Continue to uh, bless us in such a way that we will come to understand your loving care and appreciate how much it means to us as we sometimes fall into uh, the whirlwind of life and uh, it seems like those cares are just too big for us and then understand that we can turn to you because as Peter says, because he cares for you. Bless us this evening. Help us to... Uh, Take our Lord with us and help us to rise with our Lord on our lips. Be with us and bless us. I pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.